I would like to call our annual town meeting for May 24th, 2022 to order. I would like the town clerk to begin with the reading of the warrant. Okay. Pursuant to the within warrant, I have notified and warned the inhabitants of Waitley of the town of Waitley by posting attested copies of the same at the town office building, post office, and SW Dickinson Library in said town, seven days at least before the date of the meeting as within directed. Edwin Zaneski, dated May 12, 2022. Thank you very much. There are a few events few messages to convey uh, before we begin taking up the articles themselves, at which point I will introduce what the articles are about. Uh, the first of these is a sad one, uh, and I'm a bit constrained what I can say here. The town moderator famously has no opinion on any of the business before the town. But I cannot help but notice that we are here on the grounds of our elementary school, which we value much, and the children in it, the teachers, the staff. And there was another, and it pains me to have to proceed the word this with another, school shooting today in this country, 14 dead, including a teacher and 12 students. And so I ask us all for a moment of silence. Thank you. The, before we start with the articles themselves, there are two uh, happier notes. One involves the dedication of the um, <coughs> annual report to a particular member of the town, and the other involves an announcement about our 250th celebration. Um, let me start with the 250th celebration. I invite Keith Bardwell up to please talk about the coming events for our 250th plus one celebration. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to thank, <laughs> never fails. I'd like to thank the moderator for the opportunity to speak and to update everybody about the events for the 250th. I'm Keith Bardwell, I'm the co-chair of the 250th committee. And a few things that you may have seen today, the scoop that was mailed out and in the scoop has a updated list of all our events going on. There will be another special edition of the scoop coming out in about two weeks around the 12th of June and that'll have a much more detailed list of all the events with a lot more of the specifics of each event such as like where to park, things of that nature. So. Look forward to seeing that in the next couple of weeks and that'll help you um, further make your plans. Other things that I'd like to just say to everybody is that we've had wonderful donations from many of the businesses in towns and individuals and to date we've received over $40,000 and we're grateful for that. Um, yeah, I think that's worth a round of applause especially in the tough times with COVID, many businesses have been struggling as we all know. And so um, we do operate as a nonprofit 501c3. So any donations are tax deductible. And if there's still someone out there that is interested in donating, contact somebody on the committee. Um, when the celebration is over and complete, we hope to be able to return a lot of the money that town meeting has appropriated. So that is one of the reasons we've been soliciting donations so that it's not all bearing on the burden of the taxpayers. Uh, many of the subcommittees are still working diligently to prepare for all of their events. 
another thing I'd like to turn everybody's attention to if they didn't see it as they came in is um, there's a table set up where we have tickets that are being sold for the barbecue and the concerts. And right now the concert ticket prices are being held at a lower price for the residents. Once they go public, the price will go up. I'm not sure at the moment what that price is, but the price will increase when it goes public. But we're trying to keep the cost down to our residents at this point for that. And so there's also souvenirs and things of that nature. So please visit the table on your way out. Um, other things, I had a question or was asked by Fran Fortino from the Board of Health if anybody is willing to assist in regards to the trash slash recycling aspect of the some of our events, um, contact Fran Fortino. He's still looking for another volunteer or two to help in that aspect of it. Um, also, we're still looking for one or two more people to do some photography work. If someone has a hobby and wants to attend any of the events and just even amateur, just take some pictures and we're going to be trying to compile some of these photos at the, at the conclusion of the celebration. And so if anybody's interested in doing some photography, seek out one of our committee members to volunteer for that too. Other than that, I just like to say I hope to see everybody there. Um, we've got a, about a 10, 10 days worth of events planned, um, something happening every day starting June 17th, and that's um, a Friday night, and that celebration starts at Tom's Hot Dog Stand with the car show, and it's um, the Lonesome Brothers band, is, a live band is playing, and from that forward, from that day on, for the next 10 days, there's something going every day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Keith, and thank you to all the members of the committee who have been working hard, in fact, an extra year longer than they anticipated to make this uh, possible for you. Um, should be a great event. All right, um, the first five articles here, yes, I'm gonna, as part, of, isn't it as part of Article One that you make the dedication? Didn't. No. Yeah, I guess. I guess it's a okay. There we go. Uh, we're about to take up the first article, including the town report and the dedication of the report. And the reason for the first five articles is that you, by virtue of showing up, by being a registered voter, and by showing up, constitute the legislature of this town. And as such, I'm proud of you, <laughs> all right? And, and also, it means that we need to authorize everything else that happens for the rest of the year and accept the reports of what happened the past year. And so this first one has to do with that. And the others are just to allow the town to spend money because we, as a legislator, set the budget. Later, when we come to different elements of the budget, I'll be asking members of the uh, Finance Committee uh, to speak to particular issues in more detail. But please, first, um, we'd like to, I believe there is an anticipating a motion to skip over the reading of the text of the articles and just call the articles themselves. Is that motion still going to be made? I call on Don Skrosky. All right, so the motion is to announce each article being taken up, the votes that would be required to pass it, and whether the vote was successful, but not to read the text itself. Is there a second? All right. Is there any discussion on this motion? Seeing none, I call for a vote. All in favor, raise your card. All opposed? Thank you. We move then to Article 1. Uh, Mr. Moderator, I move that we take up Article 1. <laughs> and I invite um, Jonathan Edwards here to come and speak to this article, please. Thanks, Matt. Sorry I jumped the gun. Oh, no, no. It's no. cool. I... Um, wow. Tonight, um, I, I get the, the, the pleasure of something that I've done 
five previous times, and, and that's um, dedicate the annual report. Um, I've, I've always enjoyed dedicating the annual report because it allows me to reflect back on the people who have made, made a real difference to, to this community um, now over the past 18 years. And um, you, you put a lot of thought into it and you put a lot of reflection and you put, put a lot of time in to, to have conversations with people and, and I've, I've loved doing it. And this being the last time that I, I, I dedicate one, I, I admit that I was a little reflective on some of the things that I'm particularly proud of uh, in Waitley. You know, COVID threw us a curveball like no one expected. And everyone in this town stepped up to the plate and, and, and responded in, in their own way. Um, some of us doing things that, that they just wanted to do to help, others doing it just because it's what they were asked to do. Um, not just what they were asked to do, but what they felt they needed to do as part of their ongoing responsibilities. Um, you know, about, I lose track of time, maybe uh, 10 years ago now, eight years ago now, um, we worked together with the three towns to create uh, what I believe, what I know to be a fact, because other people have told me, is the premier and uh, poster child for uh, ambulance services in Western Massachusetts, if not the Commonwealth, in terms of regional delivery. Um, and it sometimes is tough for three towns to, to come together to do anything in unison, uh, let alone something as emotionally, uh, emotionally jammed as, as, as healthcare is. So during the COVID times, and by the way, we're not done with COVID, uh, sadly, um, but the South County Emergency Management Service stepped up to the plate like, like no one else did because it was part of their job. But they also tried to figure out what else they could do above and beyond what was in their job description to help all the members of this community and others and to form a larger community beyond just the borders of Waitley. And it was remarkable. And, and, and I got to, to sit there and listen to the ideas as a member of the Board of Oversight saying, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, that's a good idea. I wish I had come up with any of these. But the staff was just driving it all. The staff got involved with COVID testing. The staff got involved with response. The, the, the staff got involved with distribution of, of, of critical supplies to keep both patients healthy, caregivers healthy, family members healthy who had to give care. They, they, they knew in advance what they needed to do. They didn't have to. You know, their job is to respond to emergencies. But they took it a step further. And we should all be incredibly grateful for that, for that forward thinking, that it's not just about what's on the job description, it's about what's going to make the community better and what's going to get us through something that, you know, arguably has, hasn't, hasn't, never mind 1919, hasn't happened since the plague, which I don't think any of us were around for. Um, so I, I, I'd like to really take the opportunity, really take the opportunity to thank South County Emergency Management Service, Zach and his entire staff, because of what they did. And that's why I am um, very proud to, to, to be able to dedicate this annual report to, to SCEMS and, and their entire staff. A small handful of the of the group is over here to everyone's left. Um, so, again, thank you, you guys, very much. I've enjoyed working with you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Selectman Edwards, for the uh, explanation of the annual report dedication. Um, we have a f motion, and do we have a second for that motion? Second. All right. Is there any dis further discussion or comments regarding Article 1? If not, Article 1 needs a majority vote to pass. All in favor, please raise your cards. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote on Article 2. Second. Article 2 has been moved and second and is now up for discussion. Is there any discussion and questions regarding Article 2? 
Seeing none, we move to a vote. Please, to accept, please raise your card. All opposed? Article two passes unanimously. Um, and we move to Article three. I move the town discuss and accept Article three. Second. Article three has been moved and second. Again, we're working through the financial authorization as the legislature. Are there any questions or comments regarding Article Three? If not, all in favor, please raise your card. All opposed? Article Three required a majority and is passed unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that we move. I, I move that the town vote. The vote. On article four. <laughs> <laughs> the, the town vote to uh, take up Article Four. Second. Article Four has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or concerns regarding Article 4? Seeing none, I would like all those in favor to raise their card. All opposed? Article 4 requires a majority vote and is passed. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote on Article 5. Second. Article 5 requires a majority vote. Is there any discussion? If not, all in favor, please raise your card. All opposed? Article 5 carries. I move that the town vote and accept Article 6. Second. All right, so Articles 6, 7, 8 are starting to deal with specific financial allocations. And then for the general budget, I'll be inviting um, Paul Antea from the, from the Finance Committee to speak more specifically about that article. But first, these three. Article 6 has been moved and second. All, is there any discussion or questions regarding any of these particular funds? Seeing none, I move to a vote. All in favor, raise your card. All opposed? Article 5 required a 6 required a majority vote and has passed unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town take up Article 7. Second. Seeing none, we call for all those in favor to raise their card. All those opposed? Article 7 has passed unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote on Article 8. Second. Article 8 allocates the funds as you see. It requires a majority vote. Are there any questions or discussion regarding Article 8? Seeing none, I'd like to move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 8 required a majority vote and has passed unanimously. Mr. Moderator, uh, I recommend we take up Article 9. Second. Okay, Article 9 has been moved and second, and I would like to invite Paul Antea, Chair of the Finance Committee, to give a short presentation regarding the next series of articles. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, the actual article is going to be read by Tom Maha. Tom, could you read the article, please? Request the approval of the town operating budget for the fiscal year 2023. Please see the fiscal year 2023 budget message from the town administrator on page six of this booklet for more information. Was that it? That's what it says. Okay. <laughs> okay. We had to read that article to put the article on the floor so that there can be a discussion. I will go department by department what the increase is. And if there are any questions regarding those departments, please ask those questions. Okay. We're going to start with general government. 
general government has a total of $524,899 for a dollar change of 16,273 with a 3.2% increase. Are there any questions regarding the general government expenditure in this budget? Okay. There's a question, There's a question over there. Uh, one moment, please. Uh, we can do one of two things for you. If you could either come to the microphone so everyone can hear you, or we can arrange for someone to bring a microphone to you. Ask them to identify yourself. Yes. And as, if you would please also identify yourself. Sure. Uh, my name is Mary Stewart, and there's a 28% increase in the building operations. An explanation would be great. Thanks. Building operations of 28%. Brian Domina, could okay. you help us out there? Yeah, that's the town clerk. Um, I think you're referring to the town clerk line. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I could give you an explanation if you want, but. Yes. Um, so there's an additional uh, six hours uh, per week for the town clerk to be in the office for fiscal year uh, 23. I'll make the font bigger next year. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Next, we have cultural and recreation services. Operating budget of $157,095 for a $21,261 increase at 15.65%. Do we have any questions regarding cultural recreation services? Okay. All right. Next in line is public health. Public health has an operating budget, $94,817. Dollar change of $917 for a 0.98% increase. Any questions about public health? Okay. Next in, okay. All right, let me know. Public safety. Public safety has an operating budget of $428,296. $22,535 increase for 5.55%. Any questions regarding public safety? Okay. Next is Public Works. And Public Works has an operating budget of $429,765 for a $21,065 increase, 5.15%. Questions regarding the Public Works? You good? No. Okay. Insurance and benefits has an operating budget of $805,731, a $3,465 increase at 0.43%. Any questions regarding insurance? Oh, was that a question? No? Okay, then we're good. Okay. Then we have unclassifieds, and you can see what's in there between, from temporary loan interest, reserve fund, et cetera. Um, that has an operating budget of $74,260 for $2,807 increase at 3.93%. Any questions regarding any of the unclassified expenditures in the budget? Looks good, no questions. Okay. Um, next comes the schools. I'll take them individually. The Waitley Elementary School has an operating budget of $1,888,684 for $58,898 increase at 3.22%. Any questions regarding Waitley Elementary School? Okay. 
Next is Frontier Regional High School. Frontier Regional has a operating budget of $1,048,782, 131,000 $967 increase at 14.39%. Questions regarding Frontier Regional High School? And the last school here, Franklin County Technical School, a $230,000, $230, $145 at $31,276 increase at 15.73%. Any questions regarding the Franklin County Technical School budget? Okay, all righty. And the last on this list is the long-term debt, which we have none. Short-term debt, we have a couple of leases, and the operating budget for those leases is $48,660, same as last year, so there's no dollar or percent increase. And which brings us to our total town operating budget, Waitley, Massachusetts, five million. $731,134, a $310,464 increase at 5.73%. Any increase, any questions on any of this that is, we've just heard? Uh, please, a question from Fred. Fred, if you'll, Fred, if you'll please step up to the microphone. Yes, uh, Fred Orlowski. I have a question on the uh, long-term debt. Could you explain, somebody explain how much longer are we going to be paying for these two pieces of equipment? And has anybody looked at, uh, depending, I guess, on interest rate, paying them off sooner? That has been discussed. Uh, Brian, could you give us a, a, a term on that? Do you? Yeah, so the, they're each five-year lease purchase agreements. Okay. And this will be the this will be the second payment, so there'll be three payments after. Okay. So we have three more years of payments identical to this. Yep. Neil Abram. I wonder if in the large increase category across the whole budget. Are there any of those increases that are one time, or are those large increases, uh, such as for uh, recreation uh, and the beach, are those expected to be ongoing increases, so it's an increase in the base of the budget? I think in the cultural and recreation services, um, if you reflect back on that, um, a good portion of that was um, we put another individual uh, in, in a position in town to oversee, um, John, what do we call it? Rec. The recreation. So that made up a significant portion of that. Um, compared, compared to other years, this is a budget that is, um, you know, certainly uh, more aggressive in, in terms of um, the percent increase and the dollar increase. Much of that is driven from school costs, and much of that is driven from the fact that um, we, we, Waitley, are part of a four-member council of towns that support Frontier Regional High School, and the state tells us, essentially tells Frontier what they have to allocate to each town. So, um, I don't know, it was written somewhere, we've had a couple of years where we have come out smelling like roses. In other years, such as this year, um, not so much. Um, but that type of inequity is in all likelihood not going to continue. 
no promises, but generally, if I look, you know, reflectively, in the past, we'll, we'll, we will probably do better as time moves on. So, Paul, can I, you want me to, Mr. Moderator, do you mind if I say something? Okay, the moderator recognizes uh, Jonathan Edwards. Um, Neil, to, to, to directly speak to the three large increases under cultural uh, for you, as, as, um, as Paul pointed out, REC is REC, and we added a person because it's the most visible, outside the schools, the most visible committee in town. Um, and the dwindling volunteer base just made it sensical to, if we wanted to continue to provide a great service um, to, to, th to add a, a very small number of hours per week to one person to make sure that the services continue. Um, Tritown Beach, the simple answer is that we have historically underfunded Tritown Beach, and it, I, I want to be delicate with this. Um, it, it reflected in its operations um, the, the underfunding, and, and so we are investing more money into Tritown to make it a place that is welcoming and, and, a, and a destination for people of all ages to utilize. Um, one of the things that we hope will bring that cost back down at some level is that next year, and we, did, we tried this year, but it was just too late in the process um, in, in terms of the town meeting schedules. Um, we have invited the town of Sunderland into Tritown Beach to actually, you know, make it go along with, well, its name. Um, and if Tritown joins, I mean, if I'm sorry, if Sunderland joins Tritown, then obviously that, that ratio of, of cost for the three towns will drop Waitley's share appropriately. Um, and the South County Senior Center, so much of what the South County Senior Center does is grant funded from the state. And the state has chosen to drop back some of its perpetual grants that it's always given. And if we want the services to continue, we have to, we have to pick up the tab. Can I just talk one? Yeah, so thank you, Jonathan. I return now to Paul and Taya. Um, I would just like to follow up on Jonathan's comments regarding the South County Senior Center. And some of you may remember last year, uh, possibly the year before that, the Finance Committee had um, questioned the South County Senior Center as to how many residents of Waitley actually use that facility. They could never produce a number until this year. They have a new director and whatever magic she put together, she was able to compile some data and according to her data, there are 48 residents of Waitley who utilize the South County Senior Center in South Deerfield. So with that, we went ahead and we felt more comfortable, not completely comfortable, but more comfortable with supporting them. Um, but we're still watching this, and we will see how that turns out downstream. Okay. Thank you. Are there any further questions, comments, or discussion regarding Article 9? If not, Article 9 requires a majority vote. I would ask all those in favor to please raise their cards. Thank you. All those opposed? Article 9 required a majority vote and passes unanimously. I move consideration of Article 10. Second. Article 10 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? These next items are items that we as a legislator authorized. We have authorized funds such as the um, stabilization fund and the like, and you are going to be making it possible to move funds from one source to another uh, for their use. And so this is going to cover Articles 10 through 13. Then we're going to do similar work for capital appropriations and miscellaneous appropriations. All right, so Article 20, 10, because it involves a transfer of funds, requires a two-thirds vote. And I would now ask all those in favor to please raise your card. All those opposed? 
Article 10 required two thirds vote and passes unanimously. M Mr. Moderator, be because stabilization is a beautiful thing, I move we take up Article 11. Second. All right, vehicle stabilization at that. All right. No one's too upset at that one? Okay. Then in that case, uh, it's been moved and seconded and where it's up for discussion. Further jokes. <laughs> all right, all those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Well, that one's settled. Okay, majority vote and it passes unanimously. All right. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote on Article 12. Second. Article 12 has been moved and second involving the Capital Stabilization Fund. Is there any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 12 required a majority vote and passes unanimously. I move consideration of Article 13. Second. Article 13 has been moved and seconded. Is there any discussion, questions? Why is this one 50% and the others are two thirds? Talk to Brian later. All right, um, all those in favor, raise your hand, your card. All those opposed? Okay. We now move on to the capital project appropriations. And the first of these will require a two-thirds vote. Mr. Moderator, I, I move that we take up Article 14. Second. Article 14 has been moved and seconded regarding a hybrid police cruiser. Anyone have questions or discussion? No? Okay. Then in that case, all those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 14 required two-thirds vote and passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town vote on Article 15. Second. Okay, Article 15 only requires a majority vote. Um, is there any questions or discussion regarding the Water Department Enterprise Fund uh, transfer. Seeing none, I'd like to move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those opposed? Uh, Article 15 required a majority vote and is passed unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move consideration of Article 16. Second. Article 16 has been moved and seconded. Is there any, are there any questions or discussion? Comments about the weather? No, it's nice. Okay. Uh, in that case, we move, it requires a majority vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All opposed? And Article 16 has passed unanimously. I move now to miscellaneous appropriations. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town take up Article 17. Second. Okay, Article 17 requires a majority vote. Any questions or discussion? If not, let's move to a vote. Please raise your hand, if your card, if you're in favor. All those opposed? Article 17 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move the town vote on Article 18. Second. Article 18 has been moved and seconded. It requires a majority vote. Does anyone have any questions or discussion? Seeing none, move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 18 passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move consideration of Article 19. Second. Article 19 has been moved and seconded. It requires a majority vote. 
Is there any questions, discussions regarding Article 19? If not, we move to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? All right, that Article 19 has passed unanimously. All right, we've been through the first 20 articles. Uh, physicians recommend that uh, to use your muscles evenly, you might want to switch your card from one hand to the other in order to equ equally exercise them. Uh, we move now to the district capital project appropriation, please. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town take up Article 20. Second. Article 20 has been moved and seconded. It requires a majority vote. Are there questions or discussion regarding majority, regarding this Article 20? Seeing none, all those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 20 passes. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town Vote on Article 21. Second. Okay, Article 21 is the first of our Community Preservation Act appropriations. Um, and there's, sorry, I'm confused. I'm anticipating uh, someone from the planning board speaking later on this. Um, we can entertain questions regarding Article 21 appropriations for the CPA. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, let's proceed to a vote. All those in favor, raise your card. Excellent, I see many of you did swap hands, okay. All those in opposed? And Article 21 required a majority vote and passes unanimously. Mr. Moderator, I move consideration of Article 22. Second. Article 22 has been moved and seconded. Take a moment to look over the article. See if you have any uh, questions or comments. It's a longer one, so I'll give you a little more time. All right, I see a question. Uh, Fred, please step up to the microphone. Yes, uh, Fred Orlowski. Uh, this, this article pertains to a, uh, I guess I would call it a gift from the state, Massachusetts, to improve Haydenville Road. For It's been in the works for several years for over $9 million, close to $10 million. It's a significant major project that the town uh, can't undertake without state funds. Where I, I call it a gift because because that, that's what it is. We didn't apply. Well, we did apply years ago, but it's been in the works for several years. We've advanced it to be in construction for, I think, fiscal year 25. The time has slipped uh, for a few years, but, but that's the schedule. I guess I'd just like to make a... a uh, I guess a concerted effort or comment from the public that that this uh, the town needs to make sure that that this project is ready to go in 2025 uh, because otherwise it will be delayed and cost more. I mean we're three years away, but there is a need to acquire right away easements. Uh, talk of property owners, and some of that is going to involve town resources and costs to hire uh, attorneys and to make uh, make changes to properties. And I, I guess I would just suggest the town be prepared to look at that in the future. And, and I don't know whether the stabilization accounts are gonna cover any of them expenses or not, but I think that's something that the town needs to be really concerned about in the next three years to make sure that project stays on schedule. And also at the same time, I guess I would ask the property owners to be cooperative with the town when they go and talk about easements and negotiation of prices to, to either purchase or do easements or, pro or deed changes or whatever. I guess it has to be concerted effort by property owners and the town to make sure this project is completed on schedule. 
Uh, I think it's a very significant uh, major expenditure for the town uh, that the state has agreed to to provide funds for. So uh, just my uh, concerns that we keep this on schedule and make sure it does occur, does happen in 2025. Thank you for bringing those uh, comments and concerns forward to us. Is there anyone else who wants to add anything regarding Article 22? Seeing none, I would call us to proceed to a vote. All those in favor of adopting Article 22, raise your hands. Excellent. All those opposed? Okay. Article 22 required a majority vote, and it passes unanimously. Thank you. All right, now we're moving to our next task as a legislature, which is to essentially pass legislation done by the by town meeting is called a bylaw. And then there are some bylaws that we, other laws that we then authorize the select board at other times to be able to pass. Uh, these require our approval. And the first of these has to do with a motion amending the town of Waitley general bylaws to adopt a change uh, regarding the planning board. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town take up Article 23. Second. Uh, 23 has been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments regarding that? Uh, Judy, please. I'm Judy Markland, and I'm the senior member of the planning board. And this bylaw change is effectively putting back what we had always, as long as anybody can remember, assumed to be the case. Um, we've always been appointed to three-year terms. Our new town clerk read the bylaws and discovered, whoops, um, they're really five-year terms. Um, I happen to be on my fifth three-year term. <laughs> With, so, we know that just getting people to volunteer for three years is not easy for the planning board. Uh, Richard Smith will testify to that. And so we encourage you to please vote and restore what we had thought was always the case. All right, thank you, Judy, for that clarification. Uh, and, and thanks to Judy for uh, formally serving three five-year terms. <laughs> All right. Is there any other questions or comments regarding Article 23, which requires a majority vote? If not, all those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? Article 23 passes unanimously. Okay. Mr. Moderator, I move that the town take up Article 24. Second. All right, I'm going to call upon planning board member, now special three-year term appointment, <laughs> Brent Checkies to speak on this article and the next two. Do you want to speak to each of them separately? I'll speak to them together. Okay, would, um, in that case, would you like to step up here so that uh, mm -hmm. viewers at home will see your smiling face? I have to turn my back to right. all, of, all of you. Okay, thanks. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Brant Chaikas, and I am uh, a junior member of the planning board now with just a three-year term. Uh, so before I speak specifically to the next two warrant articles, 24 and 25, I thought uh, we on the planning board thought it just might be helpful to, for those of you who are not able to follow things as closely uh, to just hear a little bit of general background to, to make these two articles and the, and the third one after that a little bit more understandable. Hope you all have the handout that explains the proposed changes uh, and have had a chance to review it, but a lot of what I'm going to say is very consistent with what's there in that handout. So a little bit about the planning board. The planning board is a five-member committee whose primary role here in town is to review proposed changes to land use within the town 
and ensure that such changes reduce negative impacts on abutters uh, and also on the town as a whole in a manner that's consistent with our bylaws. The planning board also recommends amendments to the zoning board uh, zoning bylaws from time to time as needed, and that's what we're doing tonight. Now, when recommending these changes, the planning board uses our best judgment, guided by input from all of you at our public meetings, uh, to help you, you share your feedback with us, and that helps us help Waitley adapt to the times in ways that all or at least most of us can feel comfortable about. So now we're going to talk about marijuana and the two Warren articles that are uh, up before us, 24 that's been called and, the tw and 25 immediately to follow. Now, as, everyone, as everybody knows, marijuana is legal in Massachusetts for both medicinal and recreational use. It's taxed and it's highly regulated at the state level. Now for a town like Waitley, marijuana represents new business opportunities and the potential for new revenue streams to fund town services. Now four years ago in April of 2018, the town of Waitley approved a new zoning bylaw that defines where and under what conditions the town will permit marijuana establishments to operate. Now, last year, during 2021, the planning board became aware of two new kinds of marijuana delivery businesses that have been approved by the state uh, after, and they were approved by the state after we put in our 2018 marijuana bylaw. So these are new delivery businesses that came to our attention. So over a series of public meetings and discussions, the planning board discussed these delivery businesses and we determined that our existing bylaws didn't cover them or certainly were silent on these two kinds of businesses. And we concluded that these kinds of businesses should be allowed in town, but should be restricted and subjected to all the regulatory oversight that currently apply to marijuana cultivators, manufacturers, and retail sales operations. Okay? So as a result of these deliberations, the planning board is proposing amendments to the marijuana bylaw that would allow these two new businesses, one we'll call, and I'll define these in a moment, marijuana courier and marijuana delivery enterprises. So we're proposing amendments to allow these two kinds of delivery businesses to be established on property within the town. Now, I really want to underscore this fine detail. What we're proposing tonight says nothing about marijuana delivery operations outside of town delivering to residents inside town. That's, a, that's not a planning board issue, it's a bylaw issue, and the, and the town doesn't regulate delivery, how that's done. What the zoning bylaws affect is the establishment of these businesses on property in town. That's what these two bylaws apply to. So the marijuana courier businesses operate kind of like DoorDash. The idea here is that finished products are picked up from a licensed marijuana retailer and delivered directly to the consumer. Now for these kinds of courier businesses, there is no manufacture, so no manufacture, no storage or sales of, of marijuana products that's not permitted at the business location. They simply move product from a source to a destination and you might imagine by analogy, like a taxi operation. They're really, the business is really orchestrating the movement of goods from wherever they originate to the consumer. That's what a courier does. Now, in contrast, a marijuana delivery business can purchase and warehouse finished products on site. And they can relabel them and sell and deliver those products directly to consumers. 
marijuana delivery businesses may not manufacture or repackage finished products, and they may not operate a retail store site. All right? So these are both delivery businesses, but one just moves product from point A to point B with no storage or manufacturing, and a delivery actually can w purchase, warehouse, and deliver. Okay. So Warren Article 24 adds definitions of these two businesses that are not currently defined in our bylaw. So the it, Warren Article, the article where he, that has been called to now, adds the definitions to the list of definitions of businesses in the marijuana bylaw. The next article, Article 25, updates the table of use in the zoning bylaws. Both of these articles need to be approved or rejected as a package. You really, they kind of work together, but it made more sense for us to put them before you as two separate articles. Okay, so by re approving or rejecting, the, uh, approving them together accomplishes what it is the planning board is proposing. Now, the revised table of use is something of the critical piece. What we're doing is we are prohibiting these two kinds of delivery businesses to operate within the agricultural residential districts one and two, AR one and two. Simply, you cannot establish these kinds of delivery businesses in the AR one or two zones. Instead, we're allowing both businesses within the town's commercial commercial slash industrial and industrial districts, but only if the Zoning Board of Appeals grants a special permit and the Planning Board approves the site plan for these businesses. So there is quite a bit of additional review and oversight that will take place. I'll also note that the built into the marijuana bylaw in town is a five-year expiration on these special permits, which is another way we get to, if we're having a problem with these businesses, they don't have an indefinite special permit, okay? So now in summary, after careful review in public meetings, the planning board has concluded that these two kinds of delivery businesses are appropriate to operate within Waitley's commercial and industrial business districts. The planning board voted unanimously to bring these amendments to town meeting, and we'd be happy to take any questions you have. Thank you. Thank you, Brent, for that very thorough explanation of the next couple of articles that are coming up. Are there any follow-up questions for Brent or any other member? All right, uh, Chair recognizes Jonathan. Sorry, the moderator recognizes. Um, I had a couple, a, a comment and a question. The, the question first is, does this mean that, and, I'm, and it may not even be allowed by Massachusetts general law, so forgive me if, if, if I don't know that, but does this mean that a, 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 a contract employee of, of, of a delivery business would not be able to, just like a salesperson, wouldn't be able to have any product overnight in his or her home in residential one or two? Absolutely not. Uh, the reply from Don Souter was absolutely not. They would not be allowed to do that. Okay. Oh, okay, but you see Amazon trucks parked in people's driveways sometimes. That's because they have to take it in the house. <laughs> okay. Um, the comment that I have, and it's, and I admit that it's, go ahead, Brent. You can wait, there's a microphone over there. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. The, 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 I'm also wondering about the decision to have even the three zoning areas that you're saying is appropriate to have ZBA um, approval. The, the Waitley ZBA does not have a long track record of granting special permits. Variances. Variances, I'm sorry, yeah, they don't. 
Okay, yeah. Is it a variance or is it a... Spe or so, if we could use the microphone, please, it'll be easier to follow the conversation. Thank you. I think you're thinking about variances, which are exceptions to the law. Right. A special permit is where the ZBA decides whether this is an appropriate application of the So law. it's just the permit, it's not a variance of any kind. Okay, that's fine. And they, and they do that routinely. Right, yeah, but they don't do the, I don't think ever, but yeah. And it was Brant and Judy from the planning board. All right, are there any other uh, questions or comments? Yes, please. Let's I'll do her first and then you. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Catherine McGrail. I'm gonna put this on here. Uh, and I have a, a question. It's sort of a what if, and perhaps you can explain it to me. If, for example, uh, a distribution center essentially is allowed in one of the areas that right now um, the zoning board has approved, does that mean that they may have a fleet of trucks that could essentially go to some of the facilities that will be or are currently growing marijuana, pick up those things, bring it back to that center, and then start distributing? Because, you know, that possibly could impact um, abutters who clearly would have more traffic. I mean, they will anyway, but will that increase the amount of traffic? Brant, I wonder if you could just step up to the podium, please. Thanks for your question. I'll do my best to address it and remind you that I am a junior member of the planning board. <laughs> and so I may call on, we have four fifths of the planning board members and much senior than I. So if and anyone starts <laughs> going like this or like this, then I'll call on them because I got it wrong. But first, I want to allay any concerns. I, I really want to speak in responding to your question to the reviews that would take place before any such business would be allowed to operate in town. The, the requirement that the Zoning Board of Appeals grants a special permit to a proposed business before <coughs> they're allowed to operate, the fact that the planning board must review a detailed site plan and approve it in a public hearing before that business is allowed to operate provides the opportunity for abutters to bring their concerns. Abutters will be notified by, by, by we are obliged to notify abutters of these kinds of meetings and so forth. So, and there are provisions in our zoning bylaws where the planning board in reviewing such businesses will consider the impacts on abutters. And we are not obliged to approve these kinds of plans or we can modify the plans in ways that respond to abutter concerns. So that's a general comment. It doesn't quite speak to your particular scenario. But indeed, um, if you think about a courier business, we don't know, these kinds of business are still new, being developed in Massachusetts. Legalization in Massachusetts is relatively new. Our understanding and knowledge of the way these businesses operate is that they are relatively low impact. They are not depots with fleets of vehicles like you might imagine. Uh, most likely the courier operations are like a one or two person, like a little storefront business operation with some IT, and they're making phone calls to DoorDash-like operators who are keeping their vehicles elsewhere and just moving it around. And it'll be often inefficient for a business to uh, have a lot of vehicles on a, on a single premises. And and for the courier, we were particularly concerned ar around, or for both of these businesses, about the presence of finished products, security around those products on site. So the courier doesn't involve any temporary storage of these products. For the delivery service where there are warehouses, the state rules are very detailed about the security that, are, that must be imposed 
on those warehouses so that there's limited access, there are security checks. So I think what I want to, I think the point I want to make is that your we don't have examples of the kind of scenario you describe yet. Our understanding of both kinds of businesses is that neither business is, like, as, is at all likely to operate in that kind of way in town. Were one to be proposed in town that had that kind of footprint, we wouldn't be surprised. This would be presented in detailed plans. The Zoning Board of Appeals would have review of this. The planning board would have review of this, and all abutters would be notified and be able to participate in this discussion. And our goal is to reduce the impact of these kinds of businesses on abutters and on the town as a whole while not simply banning them. Okay. I hopefully that was a very long, maybe over, overly thorough, but I hope that helped. So just stay up in case okay. there's more questions. Okay. Uh, did that address all your concerns, your questions? Did it answer all your questions? Okay. Uh, it was I have a question. Is this on? Um, actually, I wasn't the one that was going to ask this. My husband said, what was it again? Who? Okay. Uh, apparently, the word manufacturer is included in that information. And he was curious to know exactly what do you mean by manufacturer? Do you mean the facilities that are growing? The marijuana? Is that what you mean by manufacturing? Can you clarify that, please? And then we'll go to Paul and Tina. Okay. So, so cultivation is distinct from manufacture. Okay. And in fact, we have approved some cultivation operations within the town of Waitley. Mm -hmm. um, so cultivation is merely growing. But once the product is, so maybe by analogy to tobacco, think about the growing and harvesting of the, the agricultural product and then the transfer to sites where, facilities where it's, it's dried and processed, okay. where the, um, the active ingredients are extracted and so forth. Those usually involve some specialized facilities. Some of that can be done, you know, it's possible for a cultivator to also have the capability of doing manufacture, but those are separate processes. They, they don't necessarily go together. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Uh, Moderator recognizes Paul and Taya. Quick question. This question is about the marijuana delivery only. And as I read this, it uh, indicates that they will take possession of the product. Yes or no? Marijuana delivery. Right. Mar on the definitions B, yeah. You have marijuana courier, which is completely understandable. Yep. It's just point, point A to point B. But on marijuana delivery, uh, this, these entities um, sell and deliver these products directly to consumers, but is not authorized to repackage marijuana. Mm -hmm. So it, it sounds as if they take possession of the product and they resell. They, indeed, they can. Okay. So maybe, again, an analogy might be to, um, well, we don't necessarily do alcohol delivery, but there are many different suppliers of alcohol products. And imagine a scenario in which somebody wanted to buy various products from different manufacturers, bring them to a central warehouse. And so that's a separate transaction between the delivery operator and the purveyors, and right. then they resell and transfer to consumers products from their warehouse. So on the upside, we will realize a tax assessment. Aren't you on the finance process. committee? <laughs> Correct. Um, I would defer that. <laughs> I would say uh, as a planning board member, as a junior planning board member, I would defer to the finance committee for an answer to that question. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sorry, can I follow up? I, you're essentially saying that a DoorDash type courier, a DoorDash, which is home, which is a home-based business sometimes. The, cor the, the person is, a, I mean, he, he leaves his driveway. Hey, Brent. This is. I, sure. No, I, actually, the moderator is going to say that the scope of the question is outside of the focus Why? of this. It, 
Everybody lives somewhere, Jonathan. But if you do the business, if you do your, if you're taking the call. John, Jonathan, if you disagree after these other questions, we'll take your question up okay. again. Uh, but I believe that we've ha heard from you on your question earlier. Thank you. Are there any other further questions or discussion? Hi, Beth Luke in uh, Mitchkowski Circle. You mentioned that there are other, or there have been already approved m marijuana establishments of some sort. Could you tell us what the locations of those are that have already been approved? Uh, well, certainly the one I remember very well, right off the top of my off, off the top of the bat, is uh, debilitating medical condition treatment centers (DMCTC) on Seven River Road. Um, that's right on the border with Hatfield on River Road. Um, they, they are doing indoor and outdoor cultivation at that facility, uh, and they've actually taken over the adjacent Three River Road property uh, that used to be that, um, that repair shop, and that's going to be used for um, processing and manufacture. So they're sort of vertically integrating side by side there. Uh, we have, as an example of a retail operation, we have uh, a reviewed and approved retail operations at the Sugarloaf Shops at 116 and State Road. Uh, we've uh, reviewed and approved another cultiva indoor cultivation operation at the intersection of Christian Lane and State Road. Uh, if you may, as you drive by that heading south and you look to your left, those large buildings, well, that are all enclosed and you don't see anything in there, well, that's what's going on there. So those are some examples. I didn't think you needed or wanted a comprehensive list. But there's, I think it was even noted in the, um, in the town administrator's letter uh, as a preface uh, to tonight's warrant that to date, the town of Waitley has approved 11 marijuana establishments, or at least signed host community agreements. However, the town administrator also notes that we have yet to see any revenues from any of these because not all of these have actually gone, gone to fruition, have taken root, shall we say, and grown up, uh, meaning that we've approved plans, but then the, um, the applicants chose not to go forward with their plan. So that number 11, which I saw you were momentarily shocked by, like, it's everywhere, there's marijuana in the, in the hills. No, um, um, it, it really does speak to the fact that there's so many hoops that marijuana establishments have to jump, to, jump through at the state level even before they reach us. All right, thank you. It seems everybody has saved all their questions for the end. Jonathan, is your question different from the one you asked earlier Very about good. whether a courier can keep the marijuana in their car overnight in that, their driveway? That is not what I just asked. Okay, then please clarify. Because the answer to that question was I, no, I they cannot. Well, I am well I, I have two ears, and they work okay. really well. Use your microphone so everybody else can hear. My question is, if someone is taking calls under the definition of courier from their home, getting in a vehicle to deliver from one point to another point, is that permissible? A home base, the DoorDash example was used, and people are DoorDash employees based out of their home, not just living in their home, but they're based out of their home, much like an Uber driver. So my question is, would that person be able to run a home-based business where they have their vehicle in, in, in their driveway, they're taking calls, they're using the internet, they're doing whatever they need to do to maximize their ability to go from, to drive to point A to point B. They are a courier yeah. and they are doing the, the sales mechanisms from their home. Is that allowed? So, so I'm going to, 
I, I'm going to respond to this. I'm also going to see if Judy may want to take a stab. But we, on the planning board, specifically considered the question of couriers uh, as home occupations, which I think is very much what you're speaking yeah. to. And, and I would describe myself as a proponent of the idea that couriers as home occupations, as you describe, should be permissible in town because they are relatively low impact. It would not put the kind of burden, it's not like somebody's going to be making, you know, tr tr no, 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 no home occupation courier is going to be running back and forth from their home to d a delivery site and back and over and over again all day long to the annoyance of all the abutters. If anything, the home <laughs> occupation is going to be we're managing a, an IT platform and coordinating the movement of others. Exactly. So is that allowed or no? It is allowed. It is allowed. It is allowed. And if and Judy, would you like to uh, add on to that? It, it is allowed in the commercial, industrial, and... But not in residential agriculture. Correct. Okay, um, okay, I'd like to ask a clarifying question to help with this discussion. Uh, and the moderator uh, apologized for misinterpreting the question of the select board member earlier. Um, my under reading of this is that the, one of the distinctions between a courier and a delivery is that the courier does not hold on to the product. The courier simply delivers, right? And that you're sa clarifying a courier's business could be well in they could live at home but their the question is the zoning question about with article 25 about where that operation yeah. is available i perhaps misspoke about the home occupation um it's not clear i think is the answer to that uh, one reason is that we in discussing this we realized that these businesses are not easy to set up. Just going through the licensing process at the state is horrendous. You then have to do quarry checks for all your employees. You have to have security for the trucks. They have to follow different routes all the time. Um, you have to establish arrangements with the other facilities. Um, with, with the people you're dealing with, um, we finally concluded that it was unlikely that it would qualify as a home operation because we thought that the fleets of trucks would have to be larger than, you, you weren't gonna do this with one or two trucks. So, um, and wonder, you weren't, certainly uh, weren't gonna do it with your own truck. This, this is Are you expensive. speaking about couriers or delivery, please? Couriers. Okay. I mean, <coughs> the licensing costs, mm -hmm. the lawyers costs, the software costs. You have to keep track of each. This is part of that seed to sale chain. You need software. And if I if I may, Mr. Sure. Moderator. Yes. The, and I guess I'm not doubting anything you just said, Judy. What I would argue is that that's a business decision made by an individual as to whether they can make a business model that works for them. And it's not, they need to abide by the letter of the law and do all the, the legal checks, et cetera. Yep. But it's up to that individual whether they can make it. And if they go broke, they go broke. Yep. Okay. And if they do a home occupation, they can't change the, exp the residential ex appearance of their property. They can't have more than X parking sure. spaces. So um, as moderator, I need to make sure that we know what we're voting on. And what I'm hearing so far is that Article 24 defines these categories. And that Article 25 is the question to which uh, issues are being raised now about where that kind of business is possible. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, I would like to propose, actually I'm moving, that we 
consider Article 24 now, and then we can resume discussion of Article 25 once it's been moved and up for discussion. So, but first we would need to take up the article that has been put forward, which is the accepting the definitions of courier and delivery, uh, put forward in Article 24. Are there any further questions or discussion about those definitions, or those proposed definitions? Comments about that? Mr. Olosky, please, Fred. Yes, I have a concern of who is, who is going to be monitoring this in town? How is the town going to know either one of these exists and who's going to be enforcing? The, uh, I believe these that would not be germane to Article 24. No, I, I understand uh, that, but, but it's, it's a condition that we're allowing to operate in town. How are we going to monitor that? Who's going to monitor it or know if it exists or, or, or isn't done properly? Who is going to do that in town? I accept that question in advance for Article 25. Okay. Are there further questions or comments regarding Article 24, regarding the definitions? Um, Please. This is not a question about the definition. It is a question as to whether or not the planning board is moving forward to change zoning to for these specific businesses and is the state requiring us to do this so i i i, I just don't know why we're rezoning up uh, are you asking about article 26 sir i may be okay uh we'll hold your question in advance till That's that time why we please. have a moderator thank you all right um, reminding ourselves of Article 24 is just to make it clear what we're talking about when we're talking about couriers and delivery and whether we want to accept those as the definitions we will use. Are there further questions and comments about that before proceeding to vote? Yes, please, there's a question in the back. Thank you. It looks like marijuana delivery operates more like an Amazon may warehouse products i know we covered this a little bit so what i'm understanding is that this marijuana deliverer can also maintain a warehouse within the confines of waitley that is correct okay so that's a, it's adding warehousing within the zone we're just talking about the definition I, of what a marijuana delivery businesses versus a marijuana courier at this point. I this is not about Thank zones you. yet. All right, let's uh, proceed to a vote for Article 24, please. All those in favor of accepting the definitions, the two-thirds vote will be required. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed? All right, Article 24 has passed. I move. And we're now accepting motions for Article 25. Mr. Moderator, I move consideration of Article 25. Second. All right, so um, for those of you following at home, Article 25 is now about where these businesses are permitted to operate. And Article 26 coming up next will be whether we should change where what some of these areas in town are designated. Um, so please, if I can now handle for a particular parcel, right? So if I can now return to Article 25, which is moved and second, is there any further discussion or questions the planning board might be able to answer regarding the proposed use and non-use table of use regulations for courier and delivery in the agricultural, residential, commercial, commercial, industrial, or industrial areas. Uh, 
uh, in this, uh, the planning board member is clarifying that in this article, there are no changes in zoning. It's simply defining what's allowed in particular defined zones. All right, in that case, oh, there is a question. Uh, Neil, please. I'm confused by the prior discussion that said couriers could operate out of their homes, which are probably in agricultural residential one or two, uh, whereas this uh, warrant article says that the operation is restricted to commercial and industrial uh, areas. Uh, is there an explanation of how you could have a home in a commercial or industrial area, or how do we understand the answer we got earlier? Uh, the moderator calls on the soon-to-be extremely senior <laughs> member of the planning board uh, to answer that question. Thank you for asking that question, and I apologize for the confusion. In our zoning bylaws, there is a section that speaks to what we call accessory uses or home occupations. And I'm not going to read the details, but basically, um, if you live in an AR1, if you live in any district in town, in a resi you are a, a, a residence, residence would be basically anywhere in town, right? You have a residence in an AR1, AR2, commercial, you name it, you are allowed by right to operate a home occupation out of your home. There are some rules. It's not a wild west about what you're allowed to do as a home occupation. There are rules you must abide. You can't defile the environment. You can't create nuisances and noise and all that kind of stuff. Um, so indeed, you could, well, if you could, operate a courier business or a deliver well, probably you couldn't do a delivery business because of the warehousing piece. I mean, unless you stored stuff in your house and still f met all of the other conditions of home occupations. But if indeed you could meet all the requirements in our bylaws, I'd be happy to show you at any time what, what's required to r have a valid, a legal, or le uh, a, a, an appropriate home occupation, you could indeed do courier and delivery operations out of your house in any district. By, and we did not add specific language to that part of the bylaw to restrict home occupations in that sort of way. Okay? This table of use, what we've before we added these definitions as we just did, our zoning bylaws said nothing about courier and delivery businesses at all. They were not defined businesses. Now they are defined businesses that we can regulate. And this article, Article 25, is how we regulate where those defined businesses may operate, which districts. And the two rows that we are adding to our, you know, when you live this, like some of us do, there's a long, big table in the bylaws of the table of use. It covers several pages, which define many different kinds of agricultural, residential, commercial uses. Think, like we don't, we're not allowed to have commercial piggeries in town. There's a row. We cannot have car washes in town. There's a row about that that prohibits them in the table of use. We're adding two rows in Article 25, one, per, one for each of these two new businesses, and being explicit about where they're permitted and where, where, and where they may be established if the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, issues a special permit. Okay? Thank you. That's my card. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, I want to take questions from people who have not yet asked questions first. Uh, and so uh, let me start, please, with Fred up here, and, and then you, sir. I would just want to suggest that one thing that the town meeting can do is pass this bylaw. If there's ambiguity with regard to courier activity in the 
agricultural residential districts, that can be taken up with a, with a discussion at a special town meeting to do that. But to pass this now, at least to get the, the zone, the commercial and industrial zoning special permit requirements onto the books and then reconsider, again, whether we're talking about ancillary use or primary use and clarify that if necessary at a special town meeting rather than here tonight. Uh, so to paraphrase, you're asking the town to adopt these protections. I'm, I'm asking the town to adopt this now and to, we will and encourage keep, keep further the conversation discussion. open if necessary okay. to All right. consider um, that later. Thank you. So there's a question in, in the back here. Here. Uh, obviously, this is talked about, and I completely understand what the gentleman said about what it should read. I'm just confused about if it says it is not accepted under the marijuana courier line, under agriculture residential, that seems in conflict with what he just said. So uh, after what was said by the, by the table, I will wait and see what happens out of a special process. The now no longer junior, senior, extremely senior <laughs> member of the planning board, Brant. Right, right. Okay. So the previous discussion spoke to home occupations. That's a special category of businesses in town that can be operated out of residences under particular guidelines. These two rows apply if somebody says, I want to, on this particular parcel of land, it's not a residential use on that parcel. Uh, if that parcel is a, if somebody buys a parcel in AR1 or AR2 and says, oh, I'm going to operate a marijuana delivery operation there, and I'm going to build a warehouse and do all of that, then we would say, no, you, that is not permitted by this bylaw because of the addition of that row in the table of use. If they buy a parcel in the commercial district and then they come before the Zoning Board of Appeals and obtain a special permit, they come before the Planning Board, have us review and approve their site plan with a butter notification and review, then they would be permitted in a commercial zone or industrial or commercial slash industrial. Uh, yes, please. Uh, I see a question over there. I still don't know if I want to sell or be a courier in a marijuana business in my house, which is right over there tomorrow, whether I can or I can't. You can't because you would first need to obtain state uh, you'd have to go through all the processes required by the state to be approved to operate a courier business at all. We're just setting rules on where your business could operate in town. If you got state approval to run a, uh, a courier business and you could do it out of your home as a home occupation, you would not require any, there would be no further review. If you were going to do this on, uh, on a parcel of land um, as a separate use, that would be, that would be when these other, um, these other review processes apply. Uh, Fred, please, your turn. I'm oh, sorry, Mary, did you have your hand? Yes, uh, just to maybe answer Neil's, Neil's question about residents uh, uh, having a home business in a residential area uh, can be in a, in a house or, or, or similar structure, but residents can also be in commercial zone. We have today residents, houses, living quarters, whatever you want to call it, apartments, in commercial zones that exist today. So for a person to be in a residence, he can be in, in an AR-1, 2, or commercial area. Uh, what I don't think we have is, is residence in commercial, industrial, or in industrial zones. So maybe the, 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 
the contentious uh, argument here is, is, the, is the term commercial. If it's allowed in commercial, because there are home businesses, like I'm saying, and residents in commercial. Uh, the moderator's reading of this question is that we are specifying what happens in areas which are residential and saying it's not permitted in residential. If you want to live in a warehouse or uh, in, in an industrial zone, um, you're raising the point that you're free to do so, but this zoning regulation is talking about what happens in the areas that are zoned residential, specifically that it's saying that use is not permitted in that zoning district. Is the moderator's understanding correct? I would say that the moderator's understanding is correct. I, I do understand, I, I'm trying to avoid giving people the, the full Monty readout of what is a home occupation. But there are detailed limits on what would be allowed as a home occupation in the bylaws. And I think if I were to read some of these to you tonight, I think you would feel comfortable in that the kinds of courier or delivery operations you might, maybe fear is too strong a word, but be concerned about would really not be a source of concern. I might just point out that, for example, in a home occupation, no more than 50% of the gross floor, floor area of the residence and all accessory buildings shall be used. Because you can't just have a home and use most of it as a business. You don't have to have a limited amount of space. It's got to be clearly secondary. Traffic shall not exceed volumes normally expected in a residential neighborhood. I could go on. But the point is, we want to allow and encourage people to have innovative home occupations without a lot of oversight. It's built into our zoning bylaws. We like that. We like people to, to do that sort of thing. But we do not want home occupations that are going to create burdens on abutters, the neighbors, bring down property values, things of that. And so, Everything, we looked at the way we address home occupations in our bylaws and concluded we did not have to make changes or, or, or revise the rules around home occupations specifically due to concerns about courier and delivery operations. That everything there would you know, if a courier or delivery operation met all of the existing rules, they should be fine, just like somebody operating a hair cutter or a, a massage therapist as a home occupation. It should all be fine. Uh, yes, please. Um, this is on Donna Wiley. I have a question about process. We have just voted to add the two new definitions to That's our correct. zoning bylaws. If, I'm not advocating, I'm asking a question. If we do not approve the, uh, the table of use regulations that are proposed or some modified version of that, what rules would apply for courier and delivery? Uh, the moderator is not in a position to fully answer that question, but I, what I can say here is that having, before tonight, this legislature had not taken up the issue of either of these businesses. And so there were no particular bylaws speaking to the operation of courier and delivery. Um, now, the legislator has, has taken up and accepted a definitions, and it would um, be natural to expect the legislature to now then pass laws related to that, since uh, it is unlikely the legislature would, would be happy not having any rules or bylaws regarding these things, right? Now, 
they, I guess the businesses already exist, and the purpose of the bylaw put forward here, to my understanding, is to now restrict this business, now that we've defined it as an accepted what the definition is, to certain areas. Um, subject to the exclusion, subject to the qualifier that a home business might be possible if it meets all the requirements of a home business, right? So, so I, I don't think I've answered your question quite right. Let's try it again. Yes, you've defined these terms. Now you, now you need, we need to, as the legislature, we need to specify where we want to allow this. If you vote to adopt Article 25, you will be specifying that you do not intend to permit that use in agricultural and residential area, zoned such as a possibility of approval by special permit in commercial, commercial industrial, and industrial. All right. Uh, many of the other questions have had to do what about the home business exception? And there's been a long and extensive discussion about what rules are required for home business, but this is not really in the end pertaining to whether you can be a pot dealer in your own home, right? Which this is not actually allowing. So if that answers your question, I'd like to move forward to a vote. Yes. Judy, please. I'm trying, yeah. Um, just to clarify what yeah. you just, or to add on to what you just said, nothing in either of these votes has any bearing on couriers as home occupation, period. Yes. Um, that will happen however this is voted, whether people vote. Right. Um, however, as Donna points out, that if we don't specify what districts Mm -hmm. The definitions we have approved, we won't be able to regulate larger businesses that won't fit in a home, do require changes that aren't residential. Right. Okay, so you have been, once again, received the clarification that this has to do with businesses that are not in homes, but are in certain areas of the town, where it's zoned agricultural or residential or commercial, commercial industrial or industrial. And we're voting to decide where we would like to allow, by special permit, that kind of business and where we would not like to allow it to be permitted. And then I suspect that there may be a great many people who would like to weigh in on additional bylaws regarding home businesses at some future event or meeting, uh, or even nominate yourself to be a junior planning board member and really jump into the deep end. Are there further questions regarding Article 25? Or has the sun set on this discussion? <laughs> All right, in that case, this requires a two-thirds vote. All those in favor of art adopting Article 25 as written, please raise your card. All those opposed? The article required two-thirds vote. It, the article has passed. Well done, everyone. We found our way out of that paper bag. Okay. <laughs> All right. We have one last article here. Mr. Moderator, I move that we take up Article 26. Second. Article 26 has been moved and seconded. Are there questions or discussion about Article 26? Don't go very far, Mr. Senior Member. I see none. Oh, there's one, please. I'm looking. Uh, the question, I guess, the question is, is, is this parcel, this is a spot zoning thing as far as I can see, is this parcel already being used to some degree? 
commercial and it wants to expand its operation, or what, why are we changing it? Uh, does our member can speak to that, please? Thanks for your question, and I'm sorry to be up here before you again. Um, this is why we had to reduce our terms from five years to three years. So in this article, the planning board's proposing to change the zoning of one parcel, this 12-0-24-2, on State Road from AR1 to the commercial district. Uh, this parcel is adjacent and immediately to the north of 148 State Road. Change was requested by the property owner. That's number one. Note that 148 State Road, as well as the adjacent pro parcel, the adjacent parcel to the south, are already zoned commercial, and the commercial zone continues on Route 510 as the state road can crosses, passes over I-91, and continues um, on the east side of I-91. Parcels across the street from the parcel in question, as well as other parcels to the north, are in the AR1 district. And a public hearing was held for public comment. If you look at that map, you will see that this is not a kind of an island outpost of a parcel zoned to be zoned commercial. It extends, there are two adjacent parcels to its south that are already zoned commercial. So this is one more, one adjacent parcel further to the north at the property owner's request. The zoning change also appeared on the warrant for the special town meeting last fall, uh, but the warrant item was tabled uh, because the town clerk had learned that... No, it was tabled. It was tabled because the town clerk had learned that the legal ads didn't properly say where the parcel maps could be reviewed. And as a result, the clerk believed the attorney general would be unlikely to approve the change. So this was brought to town meeting, but we never actually voted on it. So we went through the process to make sure that what we do today will be fully um, legitimate in the eyes of the state attorney general. Any other additional questions or comments? Uh, I see a hand up in the back, please. Thank you. My name is Sandy. I abut the property. And my biggest fear, if it becomes um, commercial, they're going to build another one of those huge buildings just south of that lot which would be Monaghan Trucking. And it's residential. I understand they want um, a boundary to protect their son's business, but that, that's great. But I'm just afraid they're gonna put another huge building there. And that's going to affect all the residential people that live there. Okay, thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? Mark Wush here again. I don't know if it's relative to this article, but uh, I've always had concerns about the aquifer along that path. And do you know if anybody's uh, discussed any possible contamination effects with the long-term uh, parking of vehicles that uh, obviously hold a tremendous amount of fuel and things that could leach into the aquifer? Are you asking about... Uh, environmental impact of the existing commercial properties. Uh, that's not under discussion here. That's under what's under discussion is is changing something to um, the other. But I will um, permit it if there's someone can speak to the uh, the issue. Is there anyone here who can speak to environment? Yes, please go ahead. So if the question is on this parcel or 
well, let's just say on this particular parcel that's proposed for rezoning, if a future business proposed some, um, you know, came before the planning board with a plan to build something there, environmental impacts are exact one of the significant <coughs> important things that the planning board does look at, and we would take that into account and um, and uh, condition any site plan in such a way to mitigate those concerns. All right, so we now have heard about where this parcel sits and what the proposal is to do in terms of a change in the zoning of this particular parcel. Are there any further questions uh, regarding this article? I'm back here. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rich Corpy. Asking my wife and I have lived on Route 5 in the commercial zone. There's an extension of that commercial zone. One family has to deal with that. Currently, it's the parcel in 2122. Eventually, 2121 may be request to be commercial zone. Eventually, 22 may be request to be commercial zone. Eventually, it'll work up. And I understand that the town. needs to expand its commercial interests to a certain extent in order to provide commerce or, and a revenue for the town. But my, what I would like to be able to say to everyone here is that our residential homes within the commercial zone and adjacent to it in the resident, which this would consider the residential character and of 21. Clarification, please. Are you asking for the planning board to duly note your comments and concerns uh, when in, in future deliberations over um, <clears throat> particular changes in zoning parcels? Are you advocating a vote against this or are you asking for the motion to be tabled? I'm asking for the consideration further, but I'm also asking it for it to be tabled until that consideration is made. I'm not saying that it shouldn't be done. I think that there should be additional considerations and bylaw changes to improve enforcement and protections for the residential homes. Living in a residential home in the commercial district, there are far less protections for us and my neighbors who also do the same. And they're concerned, I'm concerned, my family is affected. their families are affected and this effect will continue all the way up north as it encroaches up Route 5. It will happen eventually. All right. Um, now understanding what you propose, in order for that to be a possibility, someone else would have to make a motion to lay something on the table, and somebody else would have to actually second that, and then there'd actually have to be a two-thirds vote in favor, because you're not allowed to make a speech advocating for or against something and also ask for something to be laid on the table, which is why I was asking for the clarification earlier. Is there someone else who wants to put forward the gentleman's motion? Is there someone who wants to second that? All right, that's not debatable, but it would require a two-thirds vote of people to not take our, this article. So I'm going to, since it's not any further discussion on that issue, I would ask all those in favor of not taking up the article to raise your card in favor. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, there's 43 in favor of tabling. All those opposed to tabling the motion. 
Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so there's nine opposed, and there's 43 in favor of tabling. That passes, that exceeds the two thirds margin. And so Article 26 is tabled again. All right. Well, that's been entertaining. If you would like to be in on the beginning as well as the end, uh, please note that in an earlier motion, we voted to have three-year terms instead of five for the planning board. We have three-year terms for the finance. Uh, both of these boards are appointed by the moderator, and the moderator would love to have people nominated and self-nominate uh, for these positions to have the gain the thorough understanding and mastery of the uh, bylaws that can be acquired in just like one short year <laughs> uh, as a Juning Planning Board member. Uh, you too can make that leap and, and help uh, ensure the town has the protections that it needs. So with that, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Moderator, I move that we adjourn this annual town meeting without date. Second. All right. All those in favor, please raise your card. All those opposed, motion carries. The meeting is adjourned.